Did Extraterrestrial Visit Ancient Sumer? Welcome back to Epic Tales Time Channel. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of the Anunnaki, an ancient civilization that predates Greek and Egyptian deities. The Anunnaki were part of the Mesopotamian pantheon, worshipped by civilizations such as the Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. The term Anunnaki is often translated as princely seed in Sumerian, but its exact meaning and the specific roles of these deities remain somewhat elusive due to limited historical texts. The Anunnaki were originally seen as heavenly deities with immense powers and were involved in deciding the fates of humans. They were believed to be descendants of the sky god An and included major deities such as An, Enlil, Enki, Ninhursag, Nana, Yutu, and Inanna. One fascinating aspect of the Anunnaki is their portrayal in the Sumerian mythology. Etymology The name Anunnaki is derived from An, the Sumerian god of the sky. The Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of An and his consort, the earth goddess Ki. Samuel Noah Kramer identifies Ki with the Sumerian mother goddess Ninhursag, stating that they were originally the same figure. The oldest of the Anunnaki was Enlil, the god of air and chief god of the Sumerian pantheon. The Sumerians believed that, until Enlil was born, heaven and earth were inseparable, then, Enlil split heaven and earth in two and carried away the earth while his father and carried away the sky. The Sumerians, residing in what is now modern-day Iraq and Iran, made significant advancements during their time, including the invention of the plow and the development of cuneiform, one of the earliest writing systems. They attributed these breakthroughs to the Anunnaki. Statues of these deities were crafted, dressed in clothing, offered food, and transported to ceremonies, showcasing the high reverence the Sumerians had for them. A more controversial and speculative perspective emerged in the 20th century, with some theorists proposing that the Anunnaki were not mythical deities but ancient aliens. This theory, popularized by authors like Zakaria Sitchin, suggests that the Anunnaki were extraterrestrial beings from a distant planet called Nibiru. These beings were said to have genetically engineered early humans to mine gold for them, thereby influencing the development of Sumerian civilization. While mainstream academics and historians generally dismiss the ancient alien theory, the debate continues, with some still intrigued by the possibility of extraterrestrial influence on early human civilizations. The Anunnaki's influence, whether as gods or as something more otherworldly, remains a captivating topic in the study of ancient civilizations. Their first appearance known to humanity. It isn't unreasonable to speculate that aliens have visited Earth. If they arrived before the advent of writing about 5,500 years ago, we might never even know it. Astrophysicist Carl Sagan considered the possibility that ancient humans may have recorded visitations from extraterrestrials. One account from ancient Sumer, of the fish-like creature Oans, deserves more careful study, he wrote. While the tale is intriguing, Sagan recognized that there's no concrete evidence that aliens ever visited the ancient Sumerians. It isn't unreasonable to speculate that extraterrestrials have visited Earth. The Milky Way is aged and immense, with copious habitable planets, granting other intelligent species plenty of time to master sublight speed interstellar travel and conduct ranging expeditions lasting centuries or more. Imagine, if an intelligent extraterrestrial species briefly visited Earth once every 15,000 years or so, there's no way we would know today. After all, the earliest writing only dates back to 3400 BC, so if aliens landed and made a few quick pit stops before then, we wouldn't be any the wiser. But what if extraterrestrials did land on Earth thousands of years ago and their visitation was recorded in the early writing of the day? What might such a depiction look like? Venerated science communicator and astrophysicist Carl Sagan speculated on that very subject with colleague Iosif Shklovsky in their 1966 book Intelligent Life in the Universe. Such hypotheses are entirely reasonable, and worthy of careful analysis, he wrote, before cautiously adding, it is obvious that the reconstruction of a contact with an extraterrestrial civilization is fraught with difficulties. A simple account of the apparition of a strange being who performs marvelous works and resides in the heavens is not quite adequate. 
After all, ancient writings are full of fictitious, folklorish tales of deities and the supernatural. So what might set a potential extraterrestrial encounter story apart? A description of the morphology of an intelligent non-human, a clear account of astronomical realities which a primitive people could not acquire by their own efforts, or a transparent presentation of the purpose of the contact would increase the credibility of the legend, Sagan said. He went on to reference one story that lines up with those requirements, with a caveat, of course. I do not claim that the following is necessarily an example of extraterrestrial contact, but it is the type of legend that deserves more careful study. Sagan then described the legend of Oans from Sumer, the earliest known civilization in the historical region of southern Mesopotamia, which flourished between roughly 4500 and 1900 BC. Numerous ancient writers tell of a creature named Oans, rising from a part of the Persian Gulf that bordered Babylonia, whose whole body was like that of a fish, and had under a fish's head another head, and also feet below, similar to those of a man, subjoined to the fish's tail. According to the legend, Oans bestowed upon the early Sumerians insight into letters, and sciences, and every kind of art. He taught them to construct houses, to found temples, to compile laws, and explained to them the principles of geometrical knowledge. Other creatures in the likeness of Oans are referenced in other ancient accounts, returning to check up on the Sumerians. They are called Apkalu. Sumerian civilization is depicted by the descendants of the Sumerians themselves to be of non-human origin, Sagan commented. A succession of strange creatures appears over the course of several generations. Their only apparent purpose is to instruct mankind. Each knows of the mission and accomplishments of his predecessors. Notably, the Apkalu are never described as gods, again, Sagan recognized that talk of extraterrestrials in ancient Sumer was all just speculation, lacking the grand evidence necessary to substantiate such a bold claim a completely convincing demonstration of past contact with an extraterrestrial civilization will always be difficult to provide on textual grounds alone, he wrote. But stories like the Oans legend, and representations especially of the earliest civilizations on the earth, deserve much more critical studies than have been performed heretofore, with the possibility of direct contact with an extraterrestrial civilization as one of the many possible alternative interpretations. Why the Sumerians worshipped the Anunnaki The Sumerians lived in Mesopotamia, present-day Iraq and Iran, between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers from about 4500 to 1750 BC. Despite being an ancient civilization, their reign was marked by a number of impressive technological advancements. For example, the Sumerians invented the plow, which played a huge role in helping their empire grow. They also developed cuneiform, one of the earliest known systems of writing in human history. In addition, they came up with a method of keeping time, which modern people still use to this day. But according to the Sumerians, they didn't do it alone, they owed their historic breakthroughs to a group of gods called the Anunnaki. In their telling, the Anunnaki mostly descended from an, a supreme deity who could control both the fate of human kings and his fellow gods. Though much remains unknown about the Sumerians and their way of life, they left evidence of their beliefs in ancient texts, including the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest written stories in human history. And if one thing is clear, it's that the Anunnaki gods were highly revered. To worship these deities, ancient Sumerians would create statues of them, dress them in clothing, give them food, and transport them to ceremonies. Millennia later, some scholars would speculate on what made these Anunnaki so special, and why they were held in such high regard. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the ancient alien theory really took off. Why some think the Anunnaki were actually ancient aliens? Much of what we know about the Sumerian civilization comes from clues that they left behind in thousands of clay tablets. To this day, these tablets are still being researched. But one author claimed that some of the texts hold an incredible revelation, the Anunnaki were actually aliens. In 1976, a scholar named Zakaria Sitchin wrote a book called The Twelfth Planet, which shared translations of 14 tablets related to Enki, a child of the Sumerian supreme deity and His book claimed that the Sumerians believed that the Anunnaki came from a far-off planet called Nibiru. 
according to Sitchin, Nibiru has an elongated orbit of 3,600 years. At one point, this planet passed close by Earth. And its people, the Anunnaki, decided to make contact with our world around 500,000 years ago. But the Anunnaki sought more than just a friendly exchange. They wanted gold, which they desperately needed to repair their planet's atmosphere. Since the Anunnaki weren't able to mine gold themselves, they decided to genetically engineer primitive humans to mine gold for them. And by the time the Sumerians emerged as a civilization, the Anunnaki had given people the ability to write, solve math problems, and plan cities, which led to the future development of life as we know it. This may seem like a truly out-of-this-world claim. But Sitchin, who spent decades studying ancient Hebrew, Akkadian, and Sumerian until his death at age 90 in 2010, once said that skeptics didn't have to take his word for it. It's important to note that while the Anunnaki have become a popular subject among conspiracy theorists and enthusiasts of the paranormal, their true impact lies in the rich cultural and historical context they provide. The Anunnaki's story is a testament to humanity's enduring curiosity about the unknown and our propensity to weave intricate narratives that span time and space. As we continue to uncover new archaeological evidence and scholarly insights, the Anunnaki's place in human history remains a fascinating topic for exploration and discussion. Their narrative not only captivates our imagination but also encourages us to appreciate the real achievements of ancient civilizations. Don't miss out on further fascinating discussions about the mysteries of our past. Subscribe to our channel for more engaging content, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our next episode on the legendary figures of history and mythology. Stay tuned for more epic tales that bring to life the wonders of our ancient world. And if you liked this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and watch previous video about the Israel-Palestine unraveling the Gaza-Hamas conflict.